Hi, it's David Ask the Electrician, and today we're going to be talking about connecting a portable generator to a home. So you might be wondering, why in the world do I have to have a special hookup for my generator to my house panel? Why can't I just go ahead and plug it in, back feed the house, or whatever? And the reason is simple. Not only are you powering up your home if you do it incorrectly, you're also sending electricity back onto the utility line, and this is causing a shock hazard on any lineman that might be working on the transmission lines and making repairs. Not only that, is you pose a uh, threat to your own home electrical wiring system that could cause damage to your electrical wiring and could burn out and damage your generator. So with, with this project, we're going to be looking at a panel that we're going to be connecting the generator to. It's going to be one of the least expensive ways to connect the generator. It can be done either at a main panel or a sub-main panel. In this case, the main panel is in a remote location about 200 feet away from the house. But we are working with a sub-panel that has a main breaker in it. And that is the key, that you have to have a main breaker shut off at the panel. And you're also going to be installing an interlock device that will act as a transfer switch at the panel. So we do a little bit of research, went to the supply house, and we see that there is linkage available for this particular panel. We see a cross-reference of model numbers and part numbers. So we have to gather some information off of our own panel. We get the brand na name, we get the model number, and we cross-reference that, and it end up coming up with a circuit breaker interlock device. This device only allows one of the breakers on at one time. You either have your main breaker on and your generator supply off, or you have your generator supply on and the main breaker off. You cannot have both of them on at the same time. So this prevents any type of a problem that could occur if both supplies are on at the same time. Now in some panels, you'll see that they're going to be really loaded up with a lot of breakers. There could be very little breaker space left or maybe no breaker space at all. In this case, there is a possibility, depending on your brand and the model, that you can install twin breakers that will take the place. You'll be able to put two circuits in the place of one circuit breaker. And in some cases, we have double pull breakers that are the full size. You can install a quad breaker, and that will allow you to put four circuits in one spot of where there's two circuits that is normally installed. This, has, this should be done by an electrician. This whole project should be done by an electrician. And because we know, best of all, what has to be configured and what to look for and how to do it right. So we size our cord appropriately. This one here is a number 10 gauge wire. We know that this generator that we'll be connecting to is good for 30 amps. Um, in this case, we're not going to have a separate extension cord. We're just going to have the cord that plugs directly into the generator. And honestly, when you are out of power, the last thing you want to do is search for the cord that goes with the generator. This way, the cord is already made up. It's right there at the panel. All we have to do is put the generator in place, plug it in, turn it on, and flip the switch. And then the transfer switch. Now the generator circuit breaker is sized the same amperage as the generator circuit breaker that is found on the generator unit. The generator circuit breaker will provide overcurrent protection so that if there is too much electrical amperage that is being drawn, it will trip out the generator circuit breaker or the generator circuit breaker at the panel. Both of them are going to be sized exactly the same. They're sized for the rating and the size of the generator. 
we connect the ground wire to the panel and we connect the neutral wire to the panel. These are the, the neutral wire and the ground wire that comes from the generator cord. And then we have the, in this case, 30 amp two pole full size breaker. And we make our connection to that circuit breaker, which is the generator circuit breaker. The black line and the red line, these are 240 volts across the phases or to ground or neutral off of each one is 120 volts. So together they're supplying 240 volts to this 240 volt panel. And then once we've got the generator circuit breaker connected with the wiring from the generator, we go ahead and install the interlock device onto the circuit breakers. This is done, of course, with the panel cover off. This is why this should be done by a professional electrician. And we can see how the linkage of these interlocks will only allow one circuit breaker to be on at the same time. This interlock device is UL approved for this application and for this panel. And that's the important thing, is that you have to select one of these for your panel, and there's quite a range and variety of these available for most panels. After the interlock device is installed, we go ahead and put the panel cover on. And once again, we can switch the breakers on and off to test it out and to make sure we understand how this operates. Carefully label these breakers. The main breaker, of course, is already labeled. And then we label the generator circuit breaker for the generator power. Now, in some cases, in most cases anyway, a, a generator is not going to be able to provide enough power for the whole house as it normally operates. So it's a good idea to mark circuit breakers that are not essential to be on emergency power or the generator power. And make some notes about when some things should be shut off when it's on generator or stagger your loads so that the heavy loads are not running at the same time because if if they do run at the same time you could trip off the generator circuit breaker and this concludes this video about connecting a portable generator to a home panel thank you very much and I hope this helps you